So we're an Australian ag tech company building agricultural robotics. Um, we were very much born on the farm, so we're farmers ourselves. Um, all of our software developers, all of our team are based on farm in Australia. Um, we, I guess we pride ourselves in practical technology that farmers can use and one of the things that we, one of our big milestones uh, earlier this year we cracked one million acres commercially farmed with our robots and um, we're very proud of what our teams are, are kind of, um, I guess, achieved in that. Um, but they're genuine hand over the keys, autonomous robots, um, they're not operated by our staff, they're operated by, you know, farms in Australia and um, yeah, it's been quite an incredible journey to take something from a vision of, from our own farm through to a startup technology company, through to a commercially deployed, hardened, you know, rugged company that can actually deliver autonomy. An important difference between what Swarm Farm's doing and, and, and I guess what else is happening in the broader robotic industry, um, we've developed what we call integrated autonomy. Um, so we build base robots or base, base platforms, which are the robots themselves. And if you look actually at this picture here, um, we just build autonomous robots. So we build this part, we don't build the spray tanks, we don't build the spray booms. We actually partner and integrate with third parties to put the technology on board. So we took a view very early in agriculture that, you know, the world needs a platform and we need a, a platform to deliver autonomy onto farms. But also we need thousands of developers around the world working on new technology to release it into autonomous agriculture to truly change the way we farm. So we never started Swarm Farm to save farm labour or, or kind of cut, cut labour costs. We actually started Swarm Farm as a company to bring new farming practices into play that could actually change the way we grow our crops and that's what we set out to achieve. And so that's why it's so important with integrated autonomy that we're now building the platform that allows companies around the world that have developed new weeding technology, fruit picking technology, um, chemical free um, pest control technology, uh, more efficient ways to use fertilizers, application of biologicals on plants. We're allowing the kind of innovators developing this new technology to get their products to market. And um, I think that's really important because, you know, farmers need autonomy and they need these new farming practices, but also AgTech needs a pathway and a way for it to be delivered practically, and that's kind of what we're doing here. We, um, we deploy our robots with farmers and for a three-year period, so farmers sign up for one of our robots for a three-year term. Um, we fully support that robot for the three years, and then we change that robot out three years down the track. Um, it's a really good model because um, the technology is moving so fast that three years down the track, our robots are pretty much obsolete. Um, software's harder to support on older hardware. Um, and um, I guess with the amount of utilization that we're getting now, our customers are cracking, you know, 3,000 plus hours a year on our robots now. Um, it's not a toy. Um, and so three years down the track, we're getting close to 10,000 hours in the clock of these machines. Now, you know, if you look out there, most people buying new tractors and farming machinery who buy them new don't own them for 10,000 hours. They've traded them in before then um, because of reliability. Well, it's the same in autonomy. No one wants an unreliable autonomous vehicle. So that three-year term has actually been a really good way to roll our technology out so farmers don't get stuck with legacy equipment that no one wants, that we don't get stuck with technology we can't support as new generations of technology come out. Um, it's actually worked really good and our customers really like that model. So, you know, we're starting to see broad scale adoption of autonomy in Australia. So it's not hard to drive around areas of Queensland and New South Wales now and see our robots running autonomously in paddocks. And it's, it's sort of the norm in some towns where um, the adoption has been really high. And um, as we're starting to scale out now and grow the company, um, there's more and more robots um, pouring into these farming areas in Australia. So it's been a really exciting journey here in Australia. I think um, I think also, you know, in terms of the broader industry and ag tech, we've probably focused a lot on single point solutions. Um, so, you know, trying to solve, um, you know, one particular problem, you know, how do I kill weeds with steam or how do I, you know, inter cultivate between weeds or how do I pick a tomato? Um, these are really hard problems to solve and, and, and take a lot of work and you're seeing a lot of venture capital burn up into these um, solving these problems and they are really important problems to solve. It's just that they're hard and take some time to get there. So um, what we're seeing now is adoption of technology that's got an ROI now, um, which is exciting and we're seeing that pattern flow out now with the robots we've got out there. Um, and I suppose the bit we're really excited about and so is the farming community is these high end ROI type products, the things that can pick fruit, the things that can prune vines, the stuff that sort of um, you know can harvest different crops like cotton in the future. It doesn't quite exist yet robotically, but it will, and that's where it gets really exciting in the future. For the future of Swarm Farm, um, 
you know, we, we build partnerships with other companies and help get their product to market. Um, like I said, we don't build tools and attachments for our robots. We just seek to help everyone get to market and, and partner with us and, and help us get to customers. So um, I think our growth is going to be really, you know, built on those partnerships we've already built and also new partnerships as well. Um, we'll send our first robots into North America next year. So thinking about first deployments, where we send them, which industries they go into, and where we can find an ROI now that makes sense, um, knowing that some ag tech still coming that we're excited about but not quite ready yet, through to tech that can actually fit on board and actually start making a difference uh, with autonomy as well. So. Um, be pretty interesting for us as we start to spread our wings outside Australia.